Good evening YouTube, hello and welcome to what I hope will be a brand new and vibrant series about weekly NASCAR related topics and all that business. Give a summary of the stories circulating the NASCAR world and even give you a little preview of the next race and how I think my drivers will do. Welcome to NASCAR Roundup. I will record this every Wednesday, hopefully have it out on Wednesday, if not, probably Thursday. You know, I usually work on Wednesdays, so who knows when this will ever get uploaded as far as this week goes. Anyway, so of course, I have three stories on my mind right now. I could glance at, um, Actually, four stories. Um, I could glance at NASCAR.com and see if anything new has happened since yesterday, but we will start with the obvious. I haven't said anything yet on my channel really that much about Steve Burns, and that's really because I don't think there's anything that I can really contribute to what's already been said. Like, I've never attended a NASCAR race, and my first real actual memories of Steve Burns would be from... Oh, do I have that DVD still? It's from the... Yeah, there it is. NASCAR Thrills. He is like the big narrator guy and... Holy crap, I actually have the disc still. Oh, wow. Yeah. NASCAR images, sounds, emotion... Uh, it doesn't say that it has Steve Burns on it, but he's like that big narrator guy throughout the entirety of this. Um, this is actually like the preview thing. Like, this is a whole series of DVDs, I think. NASCAR Ultimate DVD Collection. Or maybe this is like everything. Like, this is all the... I don't, I don't know. Steve Burns is in it, and... Um, it's in 5.1 surround sound. So yeah, that's a thing. Steve Burns is in there. He's pretty dang nifty. More recent memories of Steve Burns would definitely have to be the Jimmy Spencer segments on NASCAR Race Hub. Wow. Those were quite the sight. And Steve just reacted in perfect, perfect way. So, you know. Sucks. To have cancer. Sure does. How about... I was thinking of, like, doing a live stream in honor of Steve Burns, but I just don't have time to do live streams anymore. Like, the one opportunity that I got during Easter, like, who knows when I'll be able to do another live stream. Probably not until, like, June at this point. So, I apologize in that regard. Um, but what we can do for now is join me in giving a resounding fuck you to cancer. So, yeah, that's the Steve Burns story, one out of four so far. The second story is David Reagan out of the 18. Well, that certainly sucks. I was really, I was thinking why David Reagan at the start of his substitution. Like, why David Reagan? It just was like random, completely out there. He's driven a Ford his entire career and now suddenly he's at Joe Gibbs Racing. But after a while, I really started looking at the situation and I'm thinking, you know what? Why not? I really started enjoying watching Reagan do good for the first time in five years since he was last at Roush and he nearly made the chase in it was either 08 or it was I think it was 2008 like 
because I watched the 2009 Richmond race, and there must have been the 2008 Richmond race that he was not good at all. Yeah, I think it was 2008. Anyway, the he is out. He is now going to Michael Waltrip Racing. I actually sent out a tweet um, during like the breaking news of this, like from going from Gibbs to Michael Waltrip Racing is like going from the Outback Steakhouse to Applebee's. It's like about the same price, but one is genuinely better than the other. You know, it's pretty much the same thing, but one is definitely better than the other. You know, that's just what I'm saying. Um, though Boyer did have a good race. He finished in like the top ten. That was pretty wild and crazy at Richmond there. So... As for the 18, well, he's out of the 18. That brings us to our third news story. Who the hell's going to be in the 18 now? The season's just a fucking mess. The 18 is a mess. The 55 is a godforsaken mess. Oh my gosh. What a mess this whole series has been. Kurt Busch. Um... And then the 34 as its its own thing. Like, you know, you really don't care because they're not going to do anything anyway. But at the same time, it's like, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's another car, you know. But anyway, so that was going to be a replacement in the 18. Who saw this one coming? Boris said? This is even more out there than David Reagan. And David Reagan was pretty out there, if you ask me. Um, Boris said he's been gone for like a long time too. He's he just gonna pop his ass back in the car again. You know, at least you had a like a driver who's been doing shit in David Reagan when you put him in the 18. But whatever, Boris said makes his return. I've always liked Boris Said because I like the name Boris and I've always found entertaining that his last name was Said. So anyway, yeah, I'm okay with it just because of that because I am entertained by Boris Said. Um, also, I confused him for like, you know, um, whole lots of moving around in this video. Doesn't Elliot Sadler kind of look like Boris Said? in this image. Doesn't he kind of look like Boris said? I'm just going to start stacking all this shit over here. Look at all this. I'm just going to start popping everything over there. Anyway, so that was three news stories. What was the fourth again? Shit. I forgot what the fourth news story was. No. I don't think it was Brian Vickers because it really isn't that much of a news story. More or less a thoughts story Brian Vickers I said I don't know if I said it when it happened but I've been saying it ever since the last time that Brian Vickers had to get out of the car should have been the last time that he ever got out of the car that's just what I'm saying Waltrip should have dropped him that was like the third time that it's happened he is a liability on the Michael Watt, yeah, it was right at the start of the season too. That's what it was. It was the last one of the last 2014 NASCAR videos I made. Vickers was out of the first three races this season, and that is then that is why Brett Moffitt's been so relevant, is because of that eighth place finish. Um, I'm sorry. I've been I've been saying since then he should have never gotten back in the car after that. I had no idea it was that recent. I thought it was all the way back in 2013 or something. But anyway. Yeah, I said that. He's a liability. I said it's going to happen again. And lo and behold, it happened again. 
So, Vickers is out now, and he should stay that way if Michael Waltrip knows what he's doing. Look at the mess the 55 has been. Like, if they'd, if he'd found, like, a driver, you know, like Martin Truex Jr., who he fucked in the face in 2013, I think, yeah, 2013, who he fucked in the face in 2013... I mean, I don't want him on there now because he's got something with the 78, you know. He'd have nothing with the 55. But anyway, as far as that goes, that is where I stand there. They should th throw... He, I think he should keep Moffat in there for the rest of the year. Like, um... But, like... Just like give him more experience and maybe even put him in a couple of Xfinity races or something, you know. Give him even more experience. He could be a pretty dang good driver after a while. Like, yeah, he was kind of thrusted into the situation to begin with. And, you know, while it was pit strategy, you got an eighth place finish. But, like, when it was the pit strategy, like, the, the restart, he held his position for, like, ten laps, you know. I, that's why I think he's got potential, so, but, enough on Moffitt. When F Reagan was, like, announcing that he was going to the 55, like, Front Row Motorsports gave, like, this big spiel about how he's been such a good help at Front Row. So what I'm thinking is happening is Reagan will be taking over, full-time, the 55 now. And and Vickers is out or going to be in the 66 as like a developmental driver and all that business as like the research and all that crap like Mike Wallace and Joe Nemechek and even Jeff Burton for a couple of races last year were. And you know, I'm glad for Reagan. He had some good runs in the 18. He, he's putting his face out there again. You know, he could eventually work his way back up to Gibbs. But, you know, Michael Waltrip Racing isn't the end of the world. They have cars to not finish in the 30s every race like front row. As for Vickers, I just, I just hope that he doesn't come back to the race car for his sake. Like, he, he settles down, he finds something else to do, maybe in the back, like, so that this crazy shit doesn't keep happening. Like, I, I hope he kind of realizes that, because you see the 55 has been a mess for so long, and you know, it may be a good thing, like a big karma strike to Michael Waltrip for pulling the Truex bullshit. You know, maybe this is a good thing in that sense, but like, if... I just think he should stick in the background, and if and if and when this stuff pops up again, he can take time off, and it won't affect, like, the entirety of the sport. That's just what I want. Like, I don't want for Victor Vickers if he has to, like, leave all of NASCAR and he doesn't want to. I don't want that to happen to him. I want him to be able to, like, stick around and still do shit. I just... Don't see why it needs to be a full-time driver when, yet you know, his shit's gonna pop up again. I totally said that. Look back in that video, I said it was going to start again, and it was gonna thrust a whole different element into the Michael Walter racing, and I'm, 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 I'm done. I've had enough about talking about Brian Vickers. So, we're 14 minutes into this video, so I guess I'll start wrapping it up. So let's get to the Talladega preview, and there's really not much you can say in regards to previewing Talladega. At least for a while, anyway. Like, Daytona, you can now say, like, oh, Johnson's gonna do good, and Harvick will do good, and Junior will do good, like, we all know that's gonna happen. Talladega is still a little bit more unpredictable than that. And when David Reagan won the race for front row, that kind of solidified it. When Brad Keselowski won with no allies on the track, that kind of solidified it. 
when a wreck occurred right in front of the flag man, and the caution still didn't wave until they were halfway around the track again, who expected that to happen? You know, NASCAR's so eager to throw a caution for anything, and then that happens right in front of the fucking flag man, and it doesn't throw the caution, you know? As far as things go, I assume we will see a driver pick up their first win of the season at Talladega. And why do I say this? Well, I have three reasons right now, and I'll probably come up with more. Reason number one, unpredictability. Just like Bristol, Talladega could end your day like, just like that. You just, one little problem. Look at this. Look at this little band pin. I'm a badass, I tell you what. I'm in a fucking band. Except I blow a tromboner instead of rip a wicked guitar solo, so it's not the band that I'd like to be in. Um, unpredictability. It could end your day just like... So, you could be there, and you could not be there at the end. You never know. So that's reason number one that I think it's going to be a new winner. Reason number two. I'm so hungry. I wish I could like just, you know what I wish is that I could just like eat endlessly, but have no health repercussions. Like if I could eat like I'd want to eat, I'd just be like, I'll just be just nothing. Just literally a mass of fat. I'm sorry. <laughs> Reason number two that I think is going to be a new winner is because there have been, how many? Like six different winners this year so far. Six out of the nine races. We're nine races in. We're a fourth of the way through the season already. There have been six different winners. The trends have shown, especially at a track like Talladega with, you know, tying into the unpredictability... Um, oh, I do have four reasons. Just thought of another one. Um, the trends are saying it's going to be a different winner. Hamlin, Reagan, Keselowski, who the hell won in 2013 in the, in the summer or spring or whenever the fuck this is. I don't even remember. Keselowski again in 2009. Who saw that one coming anyway? Um, so yeah, the trends are saying it's going to be a wild race. Um, another reason. Another reason. Not reason number three. I forgot it again. God fucking damn it. Oh yeah, reason number three. The drivers, you know, this, for a lot of teams, this is their best opportunity to win. Some of them, their only opportunity. Take, for example, Front Row Motorsports. The, the smaller teams, like even the go-or-go-home teams, like Michael McDowell, and, hell, even the Burger King teams. Like, they're just gonna, they're gonna be pushing it. Like, they need to win, is what they need to do. They must win. Must win must-win situation, and they are going to push it as hard as they can. They're going to push it to the limit, and they are going to fucking obliterate the field by causing an accident because they're not good drivers, and they're, and what they're driving shows that. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot the fourth reason. Reason number three and reason number four may have been the same thing, though, so... Whatever. Um, I'd say that's about it for this video. Um, so as far as everything goes, to summarize, Steve Burns died. That sucks. David Reagan's in the 55. That's not terrible. Boris Set is in the 18. WTF. Vickers, hopefully he stays out of a full-time spot for his sake and his team's sake. And Talladega is next. Tell a motherfucking nigga and you're going to get your ass teared to shreds.
I have a bad feeling that Jeb Burton is going to cause a big crash because he's never been to Talladega. That's my prediction. Crash caused, big one caused by Jeb Burton. That is my 2015 Talladega prediction. So anyway, we'll see you at the race review.